Welcome to another pitiful, despicable episode of Monday Movie Pickup. There are so many movies this episode, but there are retailers out there trying to sell their exclusive films, and there's me trying to get a hold of those exclusive films. We have here The Love Bug. This was the first Herbie movie uh, from Disney. This is a Disney Movie Club exclusive. I got uh, two others of these. Often I don't go for the Disney Movie Club exclusives because they can be kind of pricey. But actually, they have started to slowly go down in price, and they actually have a lot of good half-off deals now. So, decided to get the Love Bug. Unfortunately, like a lot of the Disney Movie Club exclusives, not a lot of special features. But I needed it for a review, so I figured why not get the Blu-ray. They actually released um, the other three in the original four films. Uh, they also are on Blu-ray. Uh, the one with Lindsay Lohan's not. So... Don't know what that's all about. But I have here the Goofy movie. Uh, this is a classic. Uh, classic nowadays, anyway. I do love the movie. Seen it many times. I actually owned it on DVD. It was about time I upgraded. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get the sequel. I probably will eventually. Um, it's been many years since I've seen the sequel. We have here 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So it's really cool that Disney did decide to finally release this on Blu-ray. It was a couple years ago, actually. I think this is a, yeah, 2019 release. Um, that's what it says on here. I actually... I could have sworn this was released a little before that, but uh, I only had this movie on VHS, and it's about time I upgraded. Um, the movie should be available on Disney Plus now, but uh, this is a very classic Disney live-action film, and uh, like I said, can't really stand that VHS quality anymore. <laughs> Uh, now we're moving on to Shout Factory. So we have They Live Here, John Carpenter's... Um, I don't know if it's underrated classic. Um, you know, I don't feel like a lot of people talk about this one as much as his other films, but um, this was released by Shout Factory, as is a lot of John Carpenter films, and this was not part of a uh, Shout Factory sale. I actually just bought it separately because I was like, it's about time I own They Live on Blu-ray. Uh, they were doing specifically a Shout Select sale. Um, I've talked a little bit about Shout Select in the past. They numbered everything like Criterion as for the reason for the choices versus, you know, doing, you know, movies like this in collector's editions and then other Shout Factory releases. Like, in fact, I might as well get into this now. I actually have another Shout Factory Blu-ray release here, Thomas and The Magic Railroad. So, this is actually bought for a review and a lot of people talk about Thomas with a lot of affection. There are a lot of Thomas fans out there, so, you know, I'm excited to give the movie a watch and uh, try to see it through the eyes of a Thomas fan to find where the appreciation comes for this and for the television show. I only have a little bit of knowledge of the television show, but it uh, wasn't one that I watched a lot. But also, like I was going to say, this was released by Shout Factory, and this one, um, I didn't buy it as part of a sale, I just bought it separately, but... This one also isn't either a collector's edition or part of the Shout Select series. This one's just a random one-off. So Shout kind of confuses me there. They have collector's editions, they have uh, movies like that where it's just one-offs, and then they have the Shout Select series. And maybe some people would say it's because of a difference in special features, but I don't know if that's necessarily true. The collector's editions often have just as much of special features as the regular editions. I mean, this has a ton of special features, and this is not a collector's edition. But I got some Shout Select films here. Uh, this is going my way, part of the fact that I am getting all the Academy Award winning Best Picture films. This was one of them, Bing Crosby. Um, there's some music in it, so I'm interested for that. Otherwise, I almost know nothing about this movie. Um, I actually do have another Oscar winner in here, so we'll get to that as well. But um, yeah, I'm really getting through these now. I think the most, the oldest one I need to get now is Hamlet. Which unfortunately only has a DVD release from Criterion. I have no plan, uh, I, at least I don't know if there's any plans uh, for Criterion to release it on Blu-ray, so I hope they do eventually. I have here Adaptation. This does come with a slipcover. I watched this movie in college and loved it. Uh, my favorite Spike Jones film, uh, probably one of my favorite Nicolas Cage films. Everyone's super good in this movie. Um, this is the inside. Uh, they usually do these reversible covers, so since this had a slip cover, I reversed it to what the original poster was, and I'm very excited to give this another watch. One of the most interesting movies I've ever seen. If you know anything about Spike Jones and about uh, the writer, Charlie Kaufman, um, it, it, they make interesting stuff, and this is by far the weirdest, one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen, but man do I enjoy it. 
Um, I have here Robert Zemeckis' film Used Cars. So, I already had um, I Want to Hold Your Hand, which was released by Criterion. This was released by Shout Factory the same year that the Criterion version of I Want to Hold Your Hand came out. So, they're really starting to get down on these Robert Zemeckis releases. I'm pretty close to finishing my Robert Zemeckis collection. And... Yes, definitely want to check this out. And last but not least, but I have the Nutty Professor collection here. I'm very aware of the original movie. I've never actually seen the sequel, and the sequel did not have a Blu-ray release. Um, but they actually released a Blu-ray for this Shout Factory set. As you can see, I already reversed the cover. Um, these are the original posters, but there's not uh, any logos to go along with it. But as you can see in here, there are the two discs. So both movies are a part of this. I already owned the first movie on Blu-ray, uh, a cheaper Universal release um, that I don't believe had any special features with it, but this actually has a ton of special features, and the second movie, first time on Blu-ray. So, um, I, did, I haven't heard a lot of good things about the second movie besides the makeup, but that's, you know, I like Eddie Murphy. I would love to see his entire filmography, so I'll be watching it. And now we're moving on to Kino. I love the Kino releases because often their sales are not only good, but their prices in general are pretty fair. They're a lot better than, say, Shout Factory or Disney Movie Exclusives or some of the other sites. Kino has some of the best prices online, so let's try to get through all these. This is the Paradine case. This is a Hitchcock film. Um, I'm trying to collect all the Hitchcock films as well. We're going through a lot of different directors and collections I'm trying to do right now. Uh, the Oscar collection, the Zemeckis collection, well... Continuing with the Hitchcock collection, which, as you've seen in previous videos, uh, it's kind of all over the place where his movies belong, as far as who's got ownership to release them on Blu-ray, but uh, Kino has a couple other Hitchcock films. I already got the, I believe it was a five-film set with some of his early silent work. Um, I don't even think they were all silent. Actually, some of them were sound films, but um, it's another Kino set that had five films combined, but the there is some separate releases. So here's the Paradine case, which I uh, honestly don't know much about, but Gregory Peck is excellent. I see that they also have some um, interviews with Hitchcock in here, audio commentary. Like I said, Kino is just great with these releases. Sometimes they don't have special features, but a lot of the time they do. I have the other Hitchcock film here. This is Lifeboat, which apparently just takes place on a boat the entire time, yeah. So um, I have heard quite a bit about this movie. It's not a you know, a Hitchcock film that a lot of people talk about, but it's one that, you know, when I start digging deep into Hitchcock documentaries and such, a lot of people do start to bring this one up, so, um, yeah, I'm curious to check that one out as well, and I'm glad to finally add that Hitchcock film to my collection. I should also add, these are um, the Kino Studio Classics, which I don't really know how they differentiate themselves from regular Kino releases, but what I do know is they usually line everything up in the same kind of uh, black background, white lettering. So right here I have the Son of Pink Panther. Now, um, I think they're over here somewhere. I have the Pink Panther films. They're actually right behind me, if you can see them up there, barely. Um, I have all the Pink Panther films, the two Steve Martin movies, but I didn't have Son of Pink Panther. So Inspector Clouseau and The Curse of Pink Panther were released on Blu-ray from Kino, as well as Son of Pink Panther. Well, all the other Peter Sellers Pink Panther movies were released by Shout Factory. This was back in 2017. That Shout Factory set is now out of print, unfortunately. But I got it pretty early as well as the Kino films. I planned to just complete the Pink Panther collection, but I kept holding off on getting the Son of Pink Panther, and I don't really know why. Um, honestly, I think this one has the worst reviews of all of them, uh, just because I guess it deviates a ton from the original series, but it does have the original director, Blake Edwards, so, you know, the one who was on board with the original Pink Panther film, so, uh, I have here Making Contact, which, uh, this movie in other countries, I believe, was called Joey, I don't know why, but, uh, this was the movie that, uh, Roland Emmerich directed, it was, like, his first movie, all I know about it is that Darth Vader shows up at one point, I actually owned this movie on VHS, but I never watched it, and it was one of those movies that I didn't think would ever get a Blu-ray release, but, here we are. It's right here. No special features. 79, 79 minutes long, but um, yeah, if you're a Roland Emmerich fan, I already own enough of his movies. I don't know, something sounded like it was just going to fall there. I thought it was the light and it freaked me out. 
Here's The Lost Weekend, Billy Wilder film. A lot of people say it's the best Billy Wilder film. This is honestly a Billy Wilder film I never heard much about, but it did win Best Picture in 1945. That's kind of a boring poster art if you ask me. It's just a guy's face. I, I don't know. Not really much going on with this, but it's got some special features and uh, yep. This one, you know, weirdly enough, a lot of these Kino releases don't often get promoted a lot on Amazon. Uh, same with a lot of Mill Creek releases. Which is weird, because then you start to, you know, you don't realize that some of these movies are released on Blu-ray. I would have not known about this one had I not looked it up separately from Amazon. Um, I didn't have to dig too hard to find it, but it's just kind of surprising that I couldn't find an immediate Amazon link for it. I could only find the old DVD that was released uh, many years ago. But it's cool it's on Blu-ray. Uh, most of the Oscar, the Best Picture winners anyway, are on Blu-ray. Uh, I've gone through a couple of them that are only on DVD, but from this point on, besides Hamlet and I think some later movies, I, I believe like The Greatest Show on Earth doesn't have a Blu-ray yet. Uh, Ordinary People, weirdly enough, for being released in the 80s, still doesn't have a Blu-ray release. Um, but I think everything else pretty much does. So, um, yeah, we're probably going to power through that towards the end because a lot of those later movies are pretty cheap online. I've just held off on buying them just, I don't know because I've seen a lot of them and I just don't really need to purchase them at the moment so um, we'll get to them when we get to them but I'll probably end up finishing the Oscar Best Picture Collection by the end of the year and then I have here Porky's 2 and Porky's Revenge because if you own the first Porky's which you know I, it's somewhere right here yeah if you're gonna own the first Porky's you might as well get all the Porky's which, again, kind of shocked that this even got a Blu-ray release. Um, these movies are not critically acclaimed, especially the sequels. I mean, in the first movie, usually gets horrid reviews nowadays and is considered one of the most outdated movies to come out of the 80s. I saw a lot of Warner Archive releases at Half Price Books, um, but then while digging through Warner Archive's site, I saw they had another Flash 4 for $44 sale, <laughs> and um, I really need to get Curse of Frankenstein, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. So this is Curse of Frankenstein, this is the first Frankenstein movie from Hammer. As you've seen in some of my videos before, I've collected a lot of Hammer movies. I do have all the Dracula films, I'm working on getting The Mummy. The Mummy actually has some pretty pricey sets from Shout Factory, but uh, same with Frankenstein, I got quite a few of the Frankenstein movies. But the first one was actually owned by Warner. And for a while I did not, this was like one of the only movies that was not announced for Blu-ray release. Um, I finally got it in a two disc edition with several different transfers. Uh, you can get different aspect ratios, there's a new 4K scan, tons of special features. This is an excellent release from Warner Brothers. I can't believe they went this out for a Warner Archive edition. It's just, you know, Warner Archive doesn't usually hold back on the special features, especially if they're doing older releases from DVD that have yet to hit Blu-ray, but I was shocked that they went this crazy for you know, a movie that only Hammer fans and horror fans are going to be digging for, and it's, I, I'm, kudos to Warner for going out, you know, some of those Dracula releases I know didn't have a lot of special features, the first one did, but I don't think the later ones did as much, it's really awesome that they went wild, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm shocked, <laughs> and then we have here the Coen Brothers film, The Hudsucker Proxy, which, um, I don't know, I, I, I don't really know much about this, but, you know, I'm always interested to see Tim Robbins in other movies, you know, he, you know, Shawshank Redemption is so praised, and it's weird that you just kind of don't see Tim Robbins a lot in movies, so, um, I guess because that movie wasn't a huge success at the time, but, it, I mean, it was nominated for Best Picture, so people paid attention to it. I have here Footlight Parade, which, the most I know about this movie is that it was referenced in the old, you know, Disney MGM Studios ride, uh, the great movie ride, which is no longer open, uh, so I don't know, maybe I was just feeling nostalgic, but James Cagney is in this, uh, he was great in Yankee Doodle Dandy, which was another Warner Archive release, so I'm excited to give another musical a watch with my man Cagney, yeah, and there's a lot of good special features on here, I love that, and then we have here the best years of our life, I, I forgot, we have actually another Oscar winner right here. And this one, um, I've seen glowing reviews about this movie. This, a lot of people pretty much say this is like the definition of like a perfect movie. And I'm like, really? And again, it's just a movie that I don't really know much about. It's directed by William Wyler, which the most I know about him is that he directed Ben-Hur. Ben-Hur is excellent, so 
I can only imagine that the best years of our lives is quite possibly the best of all movies of our lives. I don't know. Um, but it was cool that they released this. Actually, the old Blu-ray went out of print. It was going up very high in price. I got worried that I'm not going to be able to get it for quite a while. But I guess it was because Warner was planning on releasing it in the Warner Archive, and it does carry over the special features. I'm not sure if it's all the special features, but I'm pretty sure it's everything from the original release. So, very cool. Uh, this just hit Warner Archive this year. I mean... Yeah, it's a 2020 release, actually, so just late last year, and I got some normal stuff, resale stuff, like Ice Age, the collection, this has all the five movies, which is kind of hard to find this on Amazon at first, there's still the other four movie collections floating out there, there's even, there's even some trilogy collections floating out there, and honestly, like, some of this disc work, um, it looked a little like, I don't know if you could tell in the video, but it kind of looked a little very high with the saturation to the point where I was like, I wonder if this set is um, legit. I wonder if there's a... I hope you didn't see that digital code, by the way. I wonder if this is a bootleg, but uh, no, everything looks fine. I think that just is how the discs look, so whatever. And yeah, Ice Age, it's a review that's coming up, so watch out for that. And um, I have fond memories of the first Ice Age. I never saw any of the other movies. I saw the first one. I admired it. As a kid, never saw the rest of them. I have here The Phantom, which I think this is mostly made fun of nowadays for Billy uh, Zane's awful looking suit, his purple suit, which I, I don't know who thought of that, but it, it was pretty expensive online, but maybe the prices just started to go down. I think they were a bit inflated. I don't think there's any reason that the movie didn't produce enough Blu-rays where it was rare to find. I think that, I think the prices were, were just inflated, but uh, finally returned to normal, and I just made sure to snag it while it was lower. Um, so watch out for that. If you're trying to get the Phantom on Blu-ray, might go up in price. I always get this one confused with the Spirit. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, not the same actor at all, and not the same character, and not even really the same look, but the Phantom, the Spirit. They were trying a lot of weird one-off comic book, and serial adaptations back then. And then, last but not least, got Pan Am here. So, I'll know if I've ever really mentioned it in videos before, but yeah, big Margot Robbie fan. I, I'm a fan of the actress. I really enjoy her work and pretty much everything she's in. Um, you can go check out her filmography, because she actually hasn't been in as many movies as you would expect. She's been in a lot of big movies, and a lot of movies that have made a lot of money, so uh, very successful. Um, but years prior, she was actually in this show that I remembered separately of her. I, I actually remember this show airing. It was Pan Am. I never saw it. I remember the commercials, and um, and then it went away. It was a one-season show, and they actually have this Mill Creek set that has all the original episodes, and now it's a good time to be promoting it because had Margot Robbie. This was before she was in Wolf of Wall Street, before she really blew up, so I'm sure people out there who are interested in that actress would love to return to this show. Um, I don't know what kind of reviews this really got, but, you know, I'm I'm into this 60s aesthetic. You know, ever since seeing um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I've started to kind of dig the 60s aesthetic. I was really into the 80s stuff for a long time, but um, I'm starting to kind of like that, you know, I guess it would be the early 70s and late 60s aesthetic. And, you know, this is kind of part of that. You know, Pan Am started in, I believe, the 50s, but this show does take place in 1963, and, um, of course, one of the most immediate things you think about is, uh, Catch Me If You Can, a lot about Pan Am in that movie. Uh, that's a big portion of the movie, so I think I'm gonna watch this. I think I'm gonna be putting it in the Catch Me If You Can universe. I'm gonna be thinking in the background, yeah, I bet you Frank Abagnale Jr. somewhere running in the background, trying to pretend to be a pilot right now. Maybe. But anyway, that was everything this week. Everything fell on the ground, so what do you know? But uh, that'll be it for a while. I have nothing being sent to me currently, but of course I've said that before, and then what do you know, I'm back next week or in two weeks with a bunch of junk. So no promises can be made. I can't say that this will be the last time for a long time, but I definitely, for sure, will see you in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody.
Thanks for watching the video, and special shout out to Anthony, Anna, Kirsten, Spencer, Lucas, Ryan, and Robert for the support on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive videos and blogs, and for only $7, you can request your own movie review. I hope you stick around, cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.